Welcome once again in Namaste to Unthink Me. We are kicking off talking about states of consciousness. How you doing, hmm. James? Well, I'm chubs. You know, I'm chubs. I'm ch- Hello? Just doing some kind of... Ho- Hello? Namaste, everybody, and welcome to uh, another episode of States of Consciousness. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, welcome. We're going to get a little bit more intel. We're going to just talk about kind of our experiences with states and kind of what it all means and why we Peaking past why the we veil. Care. Yeah. Sometimes you why do we... pay attention to the man behind the curtain. Yeah. Might be, might be you. It might be um, who it really claims to be. Might be mm-hmm. something else entirely. Might be a total mystery what's beyond that damn curtain. Could be. So in this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about what, uh, some experience that I've had that um, Adam told me, like, hey, that might be a little third tier happening. Um, and I was completely unaware. I was just, uh, I was really happy. Not to say I'm not happy now and not to say that I live in that state by any means. Um, my path there, some people are ritualistic and, and do meditation, yoga, practice of some sort. And sometimes it's uh, it's like spontaneous uh, catalyst driven, which is mm-hmm. where my story begins. Yeah. At that point in my life, which was, um, I don't know, probably close to 10 years ago now. Yeah, we t- Okay, yeah. A lot of things were happening to, to me or so I felt they were happening to me. I was um, experiencing a divorce, um, foreclosure, bankruptcy. Um, People who I thought were friends were not. They were friends with my things. Uh, And family (laughs) that I thought I could go to turned out that they're not the person to go to. They were um, sort of like false false prophets of of happiness. And so I remember- How are you interpreting this as it's occurring? Go on. Uh, What do you mean? Well, just um, what's your take on this? Like, what's your attitude about all this? Your, your whole life is kind of everything you've set up is falling apart. Mm-hmm. All the relationships are kind of all the things misleading. I worked on. Yeah. Being yeah, ripped away. All, or so I thought. Um, that's how you feel, too, right? Oh, You're yeah. Like, like yeah, uh, okay. I, I tried to the fake it till you make it and put up a good facade. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, when you're alone in your own thoughts, like it's it's pretty I wouldn't say dark, like no self-harm type stuff. But it's depressing. It's sad. Uh, you feel lonely, even though maybe there are some friends that you can connect to. You're still more of your mind is on the problems happening than the current situation. Um, and and any time you break free of that, there's always some sort of reminder of something that comes in the mail, something, uh, a phone call from a debt collector, or or anything can can break you. Uh, not break you, but bring you right back into the reality of like, oh yeah, shit's fucked right now. Um, and, and, and you're that's, just feeling like everything is like happening at you, like it, like uh, yeah, oh, everything's happening this, to. I don't me. even want to do this right now. I don't even want life at all right, <laughs> right. now. <This> is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I I went and moved in with some people that um, didn't care about all that shit. Like they 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 were not interested in that at all. And so did this, I didn't. Did have this crew to, have like a name or a title or anything? Was it, is there a way of, okay, okay. So just a house of people that don't give a shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, it's not that they didn't give a shit. They're not like, um, callous, cold people. They just weren't interested in talking about problems. They're pretty happy about what's going on. What kind of meme is this coming from this sort of attitude? Is is it sort of pre or trans? The the, the roommates or, or, or. Yeah. Like, I think the culture, the roommates kind of more or less is, is that coming from like dismissal of conventional values or just don't give a shit in the first place? Kind of, a kind of a trans? dismissal. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, okay. they, they have their own problems and things, but that's not what they dwell on. They rather live life today. Um, okay. but they don't, they, they're not forcing that on anyone. It's just a good sort of vibe to be around, uh, because it, it puts the impetus on me to not bring everyone down with this stuff. If I wanted to talk about bad things happening, they would of course listen. They may or may not empathize to an extent, but they're more interested in in right now. <laughs> A Kuna Matata type way. Yeah, they, yeah. They, that's not the thing. Um, but yeah, they, they, they're just, uh, they're happy to just be. Uh, not well, none of them in their own right were very well off monetarily. Um, their friendship groups were very tight and um loving of each other so it's it wasn't um what kind of setting is this is this in the middle of nowhere a little town big city 
Yeah, it's kind of it's pretty secluded, uh, okay, forested, mountainous area, Montana. A little bit, little bit out there. Yeah, yeah, a little bit out there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if yeah, if you want if you want modern convention, it's going to take a while to get it. <laughs> you okay. have to yeah. really want it. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I, I'm sitting there with these guys who 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 live their lives um, in the here and now. They don't dwell on bad bad things and. The, You've the, been Mister Work Your Ass Off every second up to that point, right? Like that's kind of oh your, yeah. I've I've yeah. had a full time job since I was thirteen. Multiple um, <laughs> most of the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of to to to, to get into a situation where flo- foreclosure bankruptcy uh, happen, you have to have a lot of things to lose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I mean those don't happen to someone who doesn't have anything. So I was in the in the sort of mindset of all these things are happening to me. I was like dodging phone calls and and not shirking responsibility because I've always been a responsible person. I was handling it at the speed it needed to be handled, which when dealing with bureaucracy is excruciatingly slow. When you're going through a bankruptcy, uh, you you don't have any money, but to get it started, the lawyer wants a lot of money. And so that's it's just stress on stress on stress on stress on stress. And, and so you're talking this is a tolerance mindset. Here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, this is fun. this this <laughs> definitely could have had a breaking point. Um, and so I cognitively over the course of probably two months decided that I'm just going to accept everything that's happening. I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm not going to if any of these calls come in, I'll accept it and I'll be nice to the person on the other side because they're just doing their job. And if a letter comes in, I'll, I'll respond accordingly because they're just doing their job. And that over the course of a, a very short amount of time of just accepting everything kind of started to change outcomes. If yeah. I am of the mind that no one is doing anything to me and willingly, knowingly ruining me there that it may be the outcome. If I feel that way, if I if I'm tolerating things like, oh, this another son of a bitch debt collector called because they saw my name come up on some bankruptcy thing and they want to make sure they get their money. So they're really going to turn the screws before the de- bankruptcy is final, that sort of thing. That's just a, that's just another human being doing their job. Yeah. And they probably hate that job. <laughs> You you and know so, too much to be a victim at this point. You, you see yeah, too much. Yeah. And so kind of empathizing with the person on the line, if I if, if they call and you hang up, they have to call again because that's what their boss is telling them. That's what their role is, is to be the squeaky wheel so it gets they get paid. The person who's making that call also goes home, also likes to catch up with the Kardashians, also likes ice cream and pizza their job is just to do this thing that most people don't like so i would i would wager that most of the people they talk to are assholes towards them because they feel that this is an attack on them on on the recipient of this call and so you know death threats go fuck yourself hang-ups these are like the norm of this job what if i were just nice to them what if i said hey I have ten dollars. You're asking for twelve. Would you take the ten dollars? Yeah, that's that's something. <laughs> and so, putting this sort of sugar coating back at them on things, they're a lot more willing to help me. And not, you know, I wasn't trying to get pull anything over on them. I wasn't trying to get out of anything, but just talking to them like they're another human. They're another person who lives a life might have pets might have kids might have a a, a partner who knows who cares because they're a human nonetheless so once i started making that change like you know what i'm gonna start accepting all these calls that i get tons of a day and uh i'm just gonna be i'm gonna be overwhelmingly and disarmingly nice to them not in a patronizing way not in a patronizing way in a genuine like yeah, this is this is Adam from ABC Debt Collection. Is this James? Yeah. How are you, Adam? Already. They're like, uh, yeah, I'm okay. I called to talk about. Oh yeah, you. Pr- I, you know what? You probably you know what I'm called calling, to talk right? about. Mm-hmm. Probably called to talk about all that fucking money I owe you um, that I can't pay. <laughs> oh yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh okay. 
So what can I hey, do for you, Adam? <laughs> is is it okay to maybe backtrack or or, or is this oh, yeah, the whole yeah, yeah. point? In in retrospect, what caused you to be in this negative place of outcomes? Is like is that the whole point, or is that is there like sort of a gestalt you have on like how did you end up here? How did how did it get like mm. this? That Pattern. involves other people that I don't know if it's fair that might to be tell too much. only my side of the story on. Yeah, yeah, um, that might be too much. Yeah, well, I mean, for yeah, I, I, whether they listen to this or not, I feel it would be unfair to to only yes. put out my side of the story because everyone's side of their story is you're going to be the victim or the hero. Um, so it was I, a yeah. lot of inter, interpersonal stuff played a large. There's role. a lot of stuff yeah, going on. Um, ultimately, yeah. job stuff. Yeah, misallocating funds to the tune of millions of dollars. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's um, cool. Okay. Yeah. Multi-million dollar bankruptcy foreclosures, things like that going on here. Okay. <laughs> uh, big deals, the big boy stuff. Yeah. Big adult stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So when these people are calling and, you know, I said, I have $10, they're asking for 12. No, it's, it's six figure amounts they're asking for. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so being nice to these people made me realize that no one okay so the, you know the conversations can go on i can give examples for days well but and you ultimate, told me like they they can't kill you so at the oh end of yeah the phone, yeah nothing's gonna happen to you You're nothing gonna be, oh, really okay. bad can happen <laughs> if i mean they could yell at you maybe but you have hurt your feelings. you can yeah you can hang up yeah you always have that out they might call <laughs> back or it's usually a different operator but you can hang up they can't hit you <laughs> They can't actually come and take something away. Well, they can in, in foreclosure and, and, and repossession stuff, but they had already done that. I was I was penniless and 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 possessionless to an extent. I had yeah, a couple boxes of things that had no value to anyone else but me. Um, so yeah, I started to realize that none of these people are willingly. They're not calling to fuck my day up. That's not their point. That's not the point at all. They're not doing they're not knowingly doing evil they have if you can if i started to empathize with these people it started to change the outcomes i have ten dollars to my name you're asking for 12 would you take the 10 uh how fast can you get me the 10 okay i may have, over, <laughs> I may have overspoke because if i give you the 10 then i i don't have rent money either could we settle on eight right away and then two later uh yeah, yeah yeah i suppose we could do that but when you call and you say oh i they call and you're like oh fuck you whatever and then they put notes in your file and then 14 calls later they're like yeah we're, we're just gonna seize everything in your bank account like well good luck because there's nothing in there i got ten dollars and and so that sort of keyed me on to what i put out is what you get back which is uh something you've said quite often if i put something out into the world somehow someday some way it's going to come back this was almost immediate gratification of if they call and you speak calmly normally and with a positive attitude towards them that comes back like on that call yeah so, okay how how much farther can this go like i started to feel almost endorphins it's not that i got my way or they got their way it's just that it wasn't a, it wasn't a horrible experience it seemed to be kind of pleasant even though the the topic and the subject matter was was poor look forward to that call here's, the, here's yeah. an opportunity oof <laughs> it, look yeah. i mean bankruptcy is in an in and of itself shirking responsibility when i did <laughs> when i did inevitably go to you have to go to court like the judge yeah. has to you have to appear in court and the judge has to say yes or no i was like fifth or sixth in line and i'm the only one there with a smile on my face everyone else is <laughs> yeah whether intentionally unintentionally whether it's staged or not they're they're putting out there that this is the worst day of their life they're like yeah. sitting in horrible posture some of them are like misty eyed and stuff and so i was like number six or seven i was i was quite a ways down on the docket say there's 10 today uh, and you sit in the room and you're listening to everyone else's so the first person got up and like headstrong cocksure kind of seem like an, an alpha type person gets up there like yep can't can't pay my debts okay how they, they, so, so i see here you owe this much i see you've you've done this to mitigate some of that and i see here are the terms of your bankruptcy and and what chapter you're filing one of the questions that you have to answer out loud like they have to ask and you have to answer is how many bankruptcies have you gone through they can see it on the paper 
Uh, well, this will be my sixth, Your Honor. That takes some <laughs> fucking balls <laughs> to go bankrupt six times. Okay, so I'm feeling like I'm sitting in the courtroom like that's really weird. Like I didn't even know you were allowed to do it six times. Wow. It got to me after all of these people It got to me. I was the first one uh, out of quite a few people ahead of me that this was my first bankruptcy. <laughs> so I'm feeling like this is probably going to go through. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I went in there uh, kind of in a positive mindset that this is taking care of business, but it really isn't. You're saying everyone I know, owe money to can just like write off all that make believe money. I had yeah. credit card debt. I had um, loan debt. I had all sorts of debts. Uh, so if I bought something on a credit card, I buy whatever, an item on a credit card. And then a year later I go bankrupt, but I haven't paid off that card. They don't come take that item back. The store still missed out or the credit card company kind of misses out. They have their own insurances and things. So I, I saw this underbelly of saying yeah fuck it uh and the government saying no yeah, okay you 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 can't actually you've overspent and you can't actually pay that which was odd but that sort of kicked off okay even though bankruptcy is this terrible situation and and gives people some sort of visceral reaction if if you suggest bankruptcy or just the word bankruptcy has this sort of undertone however however you take it as a person uh, uh bankruptcy you're like oh okay and you immediately start to think of something it changed my it's view like on that cancer of your finances it's like, exactly oh, I have, yeah i have financial cancer yeah, yeah. How, how's your finances <laughs> terminal bankrupt uh <laughs> yeah so that that sort of opened my eyes to what i felt victim to even though it was of my own doing and my own spending uh, well, not even my own spending, my own signature causing these debts to accumulate because in real, in, in big business, there's no money transaction. It's it's too painless. Um, it's not so bad. So as things went on, okay, I've, I'm looking at it as this empathizing person with the person I'm with the representative of fill in the blank, foreclosure, bankruptcy, divorce court, whatever. Empathizing with the other person made things a lot easier, a lot easier. And I didn't feel victimized when I could empathize with the other person. I put that into practice in, in more avenues in life. Deciding to empathize with what I thought yeah. was an attacker or what I thought was being imposed upon me, em empathy in that situation, um, intentional, positive, mindset entering these situations changed the situations and so i saw that as a social experiment going on as time went on so over the course of the next few weeks i started implementing that at the gas station talking to the clerk yeah at uh, you know at a restaurant or wherever it just strangers on the street if you can start to empathize truly empathize not just subject a subject b here's the transaction the end but actually go in as a person it's not subject a subject b it's me and another person who is kind of like me they're another person they have things they like and dislike and seeing where they're coming from in all of these social social situations in i started to feel um that no one is trying to do me dirty nobody yeah good situation or bad if if someone honks at me at the street and you truly empathizing with them they didn't think that they were being a dick. Yeah. They thought you were. <laughs> they were just being but fun. <laughs> well, maybe, but they thought you were the dick <laughs> and you thought they yeah. were the dick. Oh, yeah. Because no one's empathizing here. Uh, you, I, you I wanted to say, say too, like, you, you kind of had the switch on there and now you're like really paying attention. You're really facing everyone with the switch on. And mm -hmm. in that, it's when your switch is on, you're like, oh, weird. Everyone else's switch is on too. Because you're recognizing yeah, all be. these opportunities. And when it's off, you're just like, oh, man, everyone's miserable, too. Oh, shit, they're going to be so mad at me. It's funny. So this, you, you, yeah, you this, this yeah. experiment in my mind was to zip tie the switch on. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. I'm not going to let yeah. it turn off. Because if I do, <laughs> then I'm back to being a victim. I'm back to being down. I'm back to doing all these things. And Dangerous, through, but through what little, happens? Yeah. yeah, little habits and little coincidental happenings, 
discovering this on and off switch as as you've seen in another episode um so with the switch bolted zip tied duct taped on and entering situations where people's switch is off that's why i say sort of a dimmer switch it's not on or off or in the middle it's not a three-way switch there are things so you can start to shift their switch the other way and mm -hmm. when you do that's the sort of charismatic person that people are drawn to because mm -hmm. you're making them feel better about their self-doubt or you're alleviating anything that they could have self-doubt about that started to feel pretty good moment to moment you really start to see effects and outcomes because if you're dealing with someone whose switch is hard off and it's an extreme hard off switch if you can bring it up five percent that's going to change what happens it's not on me to change their switch it is on me to not be a dickhead and empathize with where they're coming from okay so that took a lot of effort a lot of effort because the the small you the lizard brain inside it's easy to think everyone's against you it's putting cr that, that that little thing of cream in the denny's cup of coffee and putting it in and then watching it like swirling around until it overtakes and then the whole cup of coffee is now a different color if mm -hmm. you can catch it before those swirls start to change the color before it becomes mono sort of light brown caramel color from the black coffee to the white cream if you can scoop out some of that black coffee really quick and keep it black coffee that's all it takes and so i started to recognize that and stick wow. to that cool and then you realize why am i putting cream in here in the first place those were the little habits that built on is like oh i can i can take a sip of this coffee before the cream gets it oh, okay the cream's in there well cream's in there i can either separate myself accept the situation or tolerate the situation but then you start to think or i started to think why am i putting cream in there in the first place why am i letting this negative below half part of the switch even enter my thought process the game that i was playing with with my mind to not be depressed and and sad all the time didn't just become empathizing with others but it became accepting everything that came in and that was the game which is fucking hard <laughs> any little thing can be one drop of cream in that cup of coffee which is a, it, it's a it's a visual example that anyone who's had a cup of coffee and put cream in knows you stare down you put it in and you can see it swirling that's very visceral to me and that's that's how i explain it to others but that's that's your thought processes it's analogous sort of to the zen thing of still water you can see through still water when the water gets stirred up you can't see through it mm -hmm. the stirred up water is like the creamered coffee <laughs> yeah yeah exactly the same thing um and so why why would you allow something to come in and make the water turbulent or why would you allow cream in your coffee you don't have to um and it's it's fucking hard because not everyone is in the same mindset of empathizing someone might just be in a terrible mood and some of that comes off on you that's just what happens that's that's sort of the nature of the beast you're rubbing around your arms and shit you get shit on you yeah <laughs> exactly where meditation is is sitting and making your mind clear this was almost a hyper focus on not shielding those things from coming in but absorbing processing that this could be cream in my coffee and it's not on me to diffuse it's not on me to make sure the cream doesn't exist it's on me to not allow it into my coffee by sort of allowing it to roll off like oh you missed <laughs> that's okay a true test of this whole thing would to be sit in be one cup of coffee uh in a diner where that's the only cup of coffee and everything else is cream and that can happen once the cream gets into the coffee once these bad thoughts once this negativity uh, it's not even bad thoughts saying bad thoughts is cream in the coffee yeah 
Yep. So that automatically is a is like a plus one to the creamer Dualistic side. Dualistic amber meme style of thinking. Yeah. Good. Understanding that. that the cream exists it. is. Yeah. If well, and forget. the funny thing is we think of cream as a good thing to put in your coffee and you're specifically saying like, I'm, I'm trying to not have any cream in my coffee. You know, oh, that's, yeah. that's what's so funny about it too. This, you're not saying this is a good thing. It's just, you don't want cream in your coffee. That's your preference. Yeah, like <laughs> backing out of the analogy is not uh, that, that cream is good and coffee is good and, and yeah. cream is bad and coffee is bad. It's that they're all the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's, uh, th that's where our language has taken a fork in the road i'm saying cream and coffee that's not it it's whole tones and half tones it's minor keys and major keys it's the, there's no way that i can put two words on this that are going to mean the same to everyone yeah. and that's that's a that's a challenge of third tier explanation for sure uh, so I'll, I'll continue down the coffee thing at the beginning of next recording because i'm only like halfway through yeah, yeah. Uh, remind me to talk about um, how pissed off everyone gets that you're not allowing their cream in your coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hyper focusing on recognizing that you don't want the something that's going to offset your vibration, your good, your goodness, your upliftedness, your uh, being, looking at ego, looking at you, looking at the situation. How? cream is heavy and it's going to pull me down even though cream rises to the top bad analogy how do i stay up here while still puppeteering yeah with james the man in the situation because it, it is a corsican brother situation if that puppet me on earth the physical thing is hurt that echoes up the line to pain now yeah. that can be physical, emotional, uh, what it, 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 it affects you in some sort of way. And I'm not saying put an insulator between that is, uh, a sociopath. You yeah. can't, re you've separated so much that you literally can't relate to those things. That's too far. That's, that's the switch. That's the extremist switch, right? So I'm, I'm going through this situation, not numb to anything hypersensitive to everything and yeah. that's why the focus has to make sure that the negativity or or what could be perceived as negativity coming towards me hits the right receptor that's not this is me being having negativity put towards me this is my opportunity to hyper empathize Go ahead. Being hypersensitive to everything is the same thing I'm saying when I'm saying everything but you is God and you're in love with it. That's mm -hmm. being hypersensitive to everything. Yeah. And so there's all these different ways of saying kind of similar sentiments and notions. It's it's language, man. It's uh we're spiral uh, dynamics and and integral theory and altitudes are just trying to give us a language of something that people have been talking about since the Bronze Age. Yeah. In before. And to perhaps say what you just said another way, there's this yeah. idea of peak states. You get into a peak state, you see you're awake, you feel more, I want this, I want to be this. And then because that's a peak state, it's going to fall back down. It's a state. You're going to get back down. So oh, yeah. from the peak state, you see it coming back, you're like, okay, oh shit, how do I duct tape that back up there? I want to be there. I uh -huh. like that. That's good. You know, that's a peak state. But in that struggle to get back there, you're falling more and more and more because you're becoming deficient. You're not good anymore. You need to get better. Everything's bad. Wait, that's mm -hmm. the thing that I need to fix. The sense of deficiency. <laughs> I'm, I'm FOMO on that high level thing. So that's cream. Yeah. Our, <laughs> thinking that you're not where you yeah. just were is, is a, is a, a vibration. You're fucking up your vibration, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So and peaks, a vibration we want to make them in maybe the, the right word or wrong right. Yeah. And this is states and traits. We want to make those peaks in the plateaus. We want to fake it till we make it. Any strategy, but we, we do see there is some sort of native superiority to this perspective. There's something just like, of course I should have empathy for other people. Of course I should interpret every moment in a wider scope than just mm -hmm. reacting to it in the immediate. Like, obviously to me. So it seems so. But I know obvious. I'm going to fall away from it. I know I'm going to, because I do. What do I do? And that's okay. How do I... <laughs> understanding, understanding that that's okay, and yeah. accepting even that. Yeah. If you don't, well, now you've got that that little bit of negativity is like wildfire. 
It's that yep. cream. It's that turbulence. You can't yeah. see through it. And if a little bit gets in, it, it's like plugging, using your thumb and bubble gum and your toe to like plug the dam so water doesn't come out, c- come in to whatever. <laughs> you can fight that as much as you want, but until you realize that this is a lake that you dammed, <laughs> uh, you're going to be fighting that all the time. So yeah, hey, Joe, I, I'm glad and you work in a button factory. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. glad you brought that up because that's exactly what keeps you from going back to this sort of acceptance state or or uh, enlightenment or third tier or any 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 of these terms for kind of the same feeling is self doubt, and that's that's the I I, I recognize I recognize that I was in a place of like extreme happiness, not even happiness, because happiness would say that unhappiness is another thing. In a state of tranquility, everything is right. Everything is the way it should be. Negative, positive, however, that's how it's supposed to be. Once you're like, oh man, I I, I feel like I'm not in that state anymore. Well, if you felt that way, you are absolutely not. And if you try to get back there, it's like uh, Sisyphus, who's rolling the rock all the time? It depends, Greeks or Romans. And then did you want cheese on it? Did you want cheese on that? So the intro to the second part of this is recognizing empathy and acceptance over receipt of something, something's happening to me, and instead of it's just happening. Yeah. Does, is it to you or is it just the thing that happened? Because once it's happened, it's gone. It's done. It can't happen again. That exact thing can't happen again. You know, of course, debt collectors are going to keep calling you. That's going to happen again. But that interaction you had, that cherished moment between you and another psyche, another ego, that's exciting. Why not take the opportunity? (laughs) It's an important moment. Even if they're a low-life, slug, leech, piece of shit human being (laughs) that is a debt collector, (laughs) there's still another... There's still another ego and psyche on the other side, which can be loved. Why not? Love being an odd, which can be accepted as like an awesome entanglement of two two quantum beings. That got super ethereal, super quick, but schluffing the negativity was step one in this journey and making the conscious decision to not being negative all the time was how this kicked off. 